Hello and welcome to today's concert and today we're in the Lake District, a very beautiful part of the world and we're in a very historic building, Kendall Parish Church. The main body of this church dates back at least 800 years and it's been added to over the years um, in different bays to make it wider and wider. It's said to be almost as wide as York Minster and to be able to seat about 1100 people, a huge, huge amount of people. And we began today with Arrival of the Queen of Sheba, a piece with a royal connection because so does the this church because over in the corner is the Parr family chapel which has the tomb of William Parr the grandfather of Catherine Parr the last wife and queen of Henry VIII so it seemed like an appropriate way to begin today's concert. Tom my brother is here filming and recording as usual bringing you the wonderful historic architecture of this building but also the sound of this brilliant brilliant instrument an unusual position to be sat in. I'm at the back of the church, the organ's at the back as well. Originally, it was a, a Willis organ, which was at the front, built in the 19th century, and this organ was built in this present way in uh, 19, uh, 1969. Uh, by walkers uh, into very much a style of its day. You can see it's unashamedly of its day from the way it looks. But it's a very exciting sound. It kept uh, some of the Willis pipe work, including the pedal reeds and some of the trumpets, and it gives you some of the very sort of exciting big sounds, but also a great sort of brightness and clarity which you get in some sort of Baroque classical style instruments. So we've got your brilliant program today to show you all the different sounds and what better way to continue than with a piece of Bach, the Prelude and Fugue in D major. One of his most um, virtuosic pieces really is famed for its opening pedal scale which when if you think of this it seems simple, but as soon as you have to play it with your feet, it's a whole different ball game. Uh, the prelude is in four sections altogether, sort of uh, quite improvisatory styles in some parts. Um, a little other brave section, then a big sort of fantasia to finish, and then into the fugue, which is very famous because of all the space it has. It's very Italianate and almost like a violin style, but the theme has lots of silence. It's an incredible sort of thing to do, and you can always hear the acoustic of the church. And because we're on this style of instrument, as an organist, um, what we do is we try and adapt the way we play and how we register and the sounds we use uh, to each instrument we come to. So this isn't a 17th century Baroque instrument. It's an instrument from 1969. So I'm going to give you back, um, which I hope will suit a playing style that I'm going to give you to suit this instrument and bring out the sounds and the very sort of great excitement that this style of instrument would have had at the time. So I hope you enjoy this. This is Bach's Prelude and Fugue in D major.
brilliant and exciting piece of music and it really gives you a workout of the entire pedal board. Incredible writing and you can see that Bach really did know how to use these amazing instruments. I think now we should have a, a conversation about Bach. Not you and I, but rather a piece called A Conversation About Bach. I was still looking for pieces which relate to the Lake District and Kendall, and this was probably the best one. I found a brilliant new discovery. Uh, Tom suggested it to me, actually, and it's by a composer called Sir Arthur Somerville. Now, Somerville, it's not a name you probably know. He's well known for some songs and some choral music. However, he's from this area. His father was one of the brothers who founded a shoe manufacturer called K Shoes. Very well known in this country and worldwide. The K stands for Kendall, where we are today. Somerville was educated in at King's College, Cambridge. He went to Berlin, the Royal College of Music in London, where he became a professor uh, and wrote many pieces of music before he was knighted as well, so becoming Sir Arthur Somerville. And I'm going to play you two, uh, there's two pieces, the two conversations about Bach. I'm going to play the very first one, the adagio, the slow one. Now, these are originally for two violins and piano. Um, and you, they give you the sound of what Bach might have written if he'd lived 200 years later, he was a, an Edwardian gentleman in England, really. Um, it's very much of its time. It sounds a little bit like Elgar and his take on Bach, really. Um, an opening bass line, which is used all the way throughout. Not like a ground bass, but that's sort of the, the basis of the whole piece. And then this falling figuration, which arrives. And there's a, a, an uplifting figuration as well. And it echoes between the two parts. I've tried to keep it like a trio sonata, with a, a part in each hand and the pedal part, but added the harmony of the piano in as well. I've uh, adapted it so it actually goes quite big, louder than two violins and a piano would be able to go. But I think this sort of music, it really brings to us a, a, a sound of the time. This is 1915 and it just feels of that period and playing it in this sort of timeless space is absolutely amazing. However, um, there is another link to Kendall and the Somerville family, which I have to mention. Now, Arthur Somerville was the son of one of the brothers who founded K Shoes. One of the other brothers had another son, Arthur Somerville's cousin, and that was Howard Somerville, uh, who was well known as a, a surgeon, um, an artist as well, but also probably best known today as a mountaineer, climber and uh, general sort of explorer, and he was one of the first people to attempt to climb Mount Everest in 1922 and 1924. Um, he went first in the expedition with George Mallory, and it was actually um, Somerville who got to the highest proven point, and for many years he held the altitude record. Mallory did continue upwards, who, and he also took with him Somerville's camera, uh, but he, was never, he never came back, so we don't know how far he made, or even if he made it to the summit of Everest, and we never actually got Somerville's camera back to prove anything. So Somerville was a really interesting guy, born here in Kendall, and of course on his expeditions he would have taken something with him, which I have here. Kendall Mint Cake. Yes, it's a very famous confectioner from this part of the world. Um, and it's been taken on just about every expedition and exploration all around the world. Um, this style went to the top of Everest. It's been to the Arctic expeditions, the top of Everest. You name it, it's still used today. Um, so it's great to be in this part of the world where you'll, you'll know this sort of thing. And uh, it's great for giving you energy. Um, I won't use it just now because... Um, this piece doesn't need a lot of energy. It's quite a gentle, sort of very beautiful piece of music. Uh, but maybe later on, on the journey home, for Tom and I, we'll have a bit of that. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy this. This is from Two Conversations About Bach, the Adagio by Arthur Somerville.
I hope you enjoyed hearing that. I think it's a really, really beautiful piece of music and I hope you listen to it again because I think it works really well on the organ but it's so beautiful and evocative of the time. Now you'll have noticed in this church, if you've been eagle-eyed, that there's actually another organ at the front. It's by Bevington from the 1880s. Um, it's from a church in Greaseborough originally. It was put in St. Asaph Cathedral in the 1990s while they had the organ rebuilt and then it was brought here completely mechanical and a, a very, very nice sound. So I thought I'd play some pieces on it and some old pieces. I've mentioned the link to Catherine Parr over in the family chapel in the corner. And so I thought, since Henry VIII was around in the times of the Renaissance, I'll give you some Renaissance dances, three in total altogether, by Michael Pretorius, um, a German composer who collected dances, um, secular pieces, into one volume called Terpsichore. Terpsichore is the, the Greek name of the goddess of uh, dance and chorus. And there's, there's hundreds of dances in this volumes, and they were published in 1612, very old indeed. And I've gone to the original parts and uh, written them out for organ. So I'm going to give you three of those now. A little Spanuletta, a, a Branza de la Torge, and then finally a Courant, a very sort of uplifting, joyful piece. So I hope you enjoy these. This is going to be three dances by Michael Pretorius from Terpsico.
Well, I hope you enjoyed those. Um, brilliant sort of refreshing music and lovely to hear on the organ, especially that old Bevington instrument at the front. Uh, back on this instrument now, something in the classical period, there isn't a great deal of classical, as in the classical period music, such as Mozart, Heido, Haydn and uh, Schubert, for the pipe organ. So I've transcribed a movement from Symphony Number no. 5 by Franz Schubert, um, I think one of the sort of most beautiful and very uplifting pieces of music he ever wrote. He was going through a, a Mozart obsession at the time. He used the same orchestration as Mozart's Symphony No. 40, uh, so it's a very light, no clarinets, trumpets or timpanis, uh, and it transfers really well to the organ. And it always sounds to me like countryside, like sort of springtime, very light and uplifting. Um, works really well, so I hope you enjoy this, a new transcription of the first movement of Schubert's Symphony No. 5.
we'll obviously be able to play that on this instrument. I think it really suits the sort of very clean sound of this organ. Uh, staying with the old style, though, we're going to move into the 19th century with Faure's Pavan. Now, when Faure wrote this, it was based on um, the Spanish court dance of the same name, a sort of very slow and stately dance, uh, and it gave way to a, a, a sort of... A, great fashion in France, especially with people like Debussy, Ravel, to write old styles of dances, and particularly Pavans. And this was the first, written in 1887, originally for a piano solo, and then for orchestra with full chorus. This is a, a version I've done for organ solo. And you might have noticed, um, I don't have a lot of help with changing stops today. I have these thumb pistons underneath to change sounds and add stops, uh, some by hand and some toe pistons. So it's, uh, you have to keep your brain really focused because as you're going along, you're always thinking a minute or two ahead as to where you're going to need to have a hand, a foot, uh, or have a hand free to pull out a stop all the time. So it's uh, where organ playing is uh, sort of quite mathematical and lots of strategic planning along the way, but the effect in the end is hopefully a beautiful piece of music such as this. So this is Faure's Pavan.
To finish today, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed seeing this absolutely beautiful historic church. And thank you to Tom for filming and recording and bringing you the sound and, of course, the wonderful architecture. I always think it's amazing when you look around. It's like being a detective because you're looking at what people have done over the years and how things change and all the plaques, monuments and everything. There's something from almost every century for the last... 800 years in this church it's absolutely incredible and thank you to everyone at Kendall Parish Church for inviting us and allowing us to come and film and record today every year um, there's a big music festival in the Lake District and I've always uh, given organ concerts for many many years and in this very very church and you get a big audience almost full at times uh, and it's an amazing sort of atmosphere in the summer um, not this year unfortunately but hopefully another year um, but so I thought I'd finish with a festival to Carter, a piece you might not know by an English composer, Percy Eastman Fletcher, no less. Percy Fletcher was born in Derby, and he's best known as a, a sort of light music composer. He wrote a lot of very famous brass band music, which was used for test pieces in the championships. Um, but also, he ran uh, various music departments of theatres, Drury Lane Theatre, um, His Majesty's Theatre, for most of his life. But he was also an organist, and one of his best-known pieces is the Festival to Carter. Uh, interlocking chords in the hands, big pedal parts, shows the trumpets of the organ brilliantly in these fanfares, uh, and a sort of very effective toccata. So I hope you enjoy this, and thank you again for watching. We'll bring you more concerts soon, very soon, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this, and this is Percy Fletcher's Festival to Carter.